Hi guys, today I'm going to be talking about the difference between temperature and tint and how these two sliders can dramatically affect the white balance in your photos. And I'm going to start right now. Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. So today I really want to discuss the two main sliders that kind of represent colour balance. And this is the temperature and tint slider. And what is the main difference between the two? Well, the temperature slider, the main difference is the warmth or coolness of that slider. So it usually goes from yellow all the way to blue, as yellow and blue are opposite on the colour wheel. But you've also got tint, which often gets neglected and a lot of people don't necessarily look at this particular slider. And this particular slider goes from magenta all the way to green. As you can see, they're also opposite on the color wheel. But when we place them together, you can see all colors are in the corners of each of the color wheel. So they are all opposing colors. And all of these colors combined create an average to create a color balance. Now, a color balance is something you really want to make sure that you get right when you're looking at a photo. Every single light source and every single, even when you're going from inside to outside, the temperature and the tint of every single light will change. And this is something that your camera can notice. Now you could actually set it in camera. So for instance, today I'm using 56,000 Kelvin, which is a middle of the light when it comes to um, warmth. So that's something I can set on my camera, but you can also set it uh, automatically and then change it afterwards in Photoshop. Now, usually if you're shooting in natural light, you're not ever going to be changing the tint. The temperature is usually something you're going to change. Usually in the daytime, it's very cool. You'll be having it at the higher end, so maybe 7,000 Kelvin. But if you are maybe shooting at sunset, you're going to want to change that further down as the light, if you notice, gets warmer. But natural light, usually you don't need to change the tint. Only in artificial light, such as tungsten light, LED light, or even sulfur light, that's when you might be changing the tint. So today I'm going to show you how you can change the temperature and tint to correctly correct your white balance in your photos. So let's have a look at what I'm talking about. So what I've done is I've got a photo here which what I'm going to do is actually correct all of the white balance. And I'm going to use the camera raw filter to do this. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and open up the photo. And as you can see, the photo is quite blue, but it's also got a hint of magenta in it. And again, this is temperature versus tint to correct the entire white balance. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and open up the camera raw filter. So I'm going to go up to filter, and then I'm gonna go ahead to camera raw filter. And what this will do is it'll open up a new dialog box. Now, when we go ahead and open it, if you haven't got it open already, you want to make sure you've got your basic sliders open. So you've got up your basic sliders, and as you can see, you've got all your exposure and white balance available here. And that's the most important part. We want to make sure we've got our temperature and tint sliders open so we can change them. Now, as you can see, they're both set at zero. And as you can see, we've got our temperature goes from blue all the way to yellow. And then underneath, we've got our tint, which goes all the way from green all the way to magenta. And again, plus and minus this will add either more yellow or more blue. And again, with tint, more green or more magenta. So what we're going to do is we're going to ahead and firstly fix the temperature first. You usually want to start from the top to the bottom. So fix temperature, then you can fix tint. If you do it the other way around, you might need to fix temperature again because sometimes tint can affect the temperature because you're sometimes adding in extra colors that you wouldn't necessarily anticipate. So always start doing temperature first, then do tint. So firstly, I'm gonna look at my temperature and it's looking a little bit too blue. So we want to remove blue and add in a yellow because again, they're opposites on the color wheel. So we're gonna go ahead and add yellow in. And as we add it in, you can see the photo is starting to look a little bit more realistic. So we're going to go ahead and I'm going to add in maybe, let's say, uh, let's go for 25 for that photo. But again, every photo is going to be different. And then what we're going to do is going to go add in the tint. Now at the moment, it is looking a little bit magenta -y. If we zoom into the skin, you can see it's looking very, very pink. So we want to introduce a little bit more green into that because that will combat all of that magenta. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my magenta slider or the tint slider here, and I'm going to go ahead and add some more green into there, 
Lovely. So I'm going to add in, let's say, around 20. And now because we've done that, we've actually fixed all of the white balance. And again, using temperature and tint in that way works really nicely. So if we do the before, as you can see, and we do the after, it completely fixes the white balance. But what happens if you don't really know where you're going and you're not too sure if you should add magenta or not add magenta, sometimes it can be quite difficult. Well, I'm gonna show you a quick trick to immediately fix the white balance. So firstly, let's quit out of this camera raw filter. So we'll go ahead and just cancel out of that. So we end up with the original photo that we started with. What I'm going to do is firstly add an adjustment layer. So I'm gonna go down to our bottom right hand corner. So I've got this icon here. I'm gonna click and I'm gonna go ahead and add a curves adjustment layer, which you can see just available here. Now in the curves adjustment layer, there's quite a lot of information, so we can ignore most of it. The most important part are the eyedropper tools found on the left hand side. And the one eyedropper tool we wanna to focus on the middle one is called gray point. Now, if you've ever heard of a gray card, this is basically using a information in the photo and represent it with a color in the, the or software and match them up to make sure you get the perfect white balance. Now, in most photos, there isn't necessarily a gray card available. Unless you've actually shot with one, I've got myself, for instance, a gray card here, it's not actually much help. But the actual white part of your eye is this roughly the same color as the white card that you can see on your gray card. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna zoom into the pupil of the eye. Now obviously you're not gonna be able to do this in all photos. Uh, the pupil has to be fairly large and it has to be obviously of a portrait. But in most photos, if you are taking photos of people, a actual iris or the white section of the eye is going to be available to you. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in to the white part of the eye. So I've got this little patch here. So what we want to do is to use the gray point card. So we've got our eyedropper tool here. You can hover over it. It's just said sample and image set to gray point. So we're gonna go ahead and click that. And then what we're gonna do is go ahead and click to that section of the eye. So I'm gonna go ahead and click like so. And if we go ahead and zoom out, you can see it is roughly correctly exposed the photo using again, temperature and tint. As you can see, it's split your red, green and blue channels all available in your histogram. And this is an automatic way of doing it. So you can use the camera raw filter if you feel confident enough, if you want to use temperature and tint, but if you're not too sure, you can use this automatic method to make it a little bit more easier for you to understand. Brilliant, and there we go guys. So that's how you can correct your white balance using the temperature and tint slider. And remember guys, that if you are using artificial light, using flashes or even tungsten light, make sure you correct the tint so your photos don't end up looking very, very magenta or very, very green. It's something that a lot of pro photographers will notice when they do look at your portfolio. Again, guys, if you want to like, comment and subscribe to my channel, it really, really does help my channel grow. Also, if you want to hit the bell notification so you don't miss any of my latest content. But until next time, guys, keep creating. <laughs>